Hey, I'm Jake T. Water and welcome to the Virtual Production Indie Film Guide. Today we're going to cover installing OCIO for use with Unreal and other production tools. So before we dive in, let's talk color, specifically your color pipeline. Uh, now if I Google for color pipeline, it's not fun. It's like a mess of charts and diagrams and terminologies like IDT, gamut, logarithms. Uh, so for today, I'm going to stick to the information that you need to know to get Unreal and OCIO working. So here's the first thing to know. Anytime you have data moving between one device and another, or one program and another, you need to think about technical color management. That's your color pipeline. This is a little different from color grading. Uh, color grading is an artistic process for directors to help convey story and mood. Color pipelines are just technical. They're about making sure the numbers are the way they should be. So I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, say on my hard drive that I have a movie file. And if I open that movie file, uh, what you'll find is a long sequence of numbers. And those numbers represent the various colors uh, of the pixels when they go on screen. So I can go in and take any one of those numbers and that number should correspond to a specific color. So say for example, that the number 10 means red, but not just any red, uh, it's a particular shade of red. Just pick your, pick your favorite shade of red. Uh, but you and I, we're, we agree that the number 10 refers exactly to that shade. Now the thing is that choice is arbitrary and it turns out that different devices and different people and different programs actually disagree about you know, what number represents what colors because it's just arbitrary in the end. We're just picking a random number. So uh, as much as it would be nice if they all agreed, they don't. And this is why we need technical color management. So let's imagine this scenario. Uh, say we have two different brands of cameras, in our case a Blackmagic camera and a red camera, filming the exact same scene. They're both filming the Canadian flag under the same exact lighting conditions. And just for now, pretend that they actually capture the exact same data on their sensor, uh, as in like pixel per pixel, it's like a perfect match between cameras. So uh, the, the images that they see are identical. This isn't true in practice, but it doesn't matter in our example. Um, but even though both cameras are seeing the exact same pixel, when they go to save the data on the file, they have to convert it to a sequence of numbers. And it turns out that the different manufacturers are converting the same colors to different sequences of numbers. Now, again, it's arbitrary. So neither one is correct and neither one is uh, wrong, but they're different. So we see here that the black magic camera, for example, has chosen the number eight to represent the most saturated red, while the red camera has chosen 11. Hopefully you can kind of already see the, the, the problem here is if we try to interpret the data from one camera uh, without taking into account like what the numbers mean or what the colors behind the numbers mean, we're just gonna get the colors wrong. This is more evident when we uh, try to look at this footage on a display. Displays have their own interpretations of numbers and what those num like what color those numbers represent. So if you just feed the raw data from one of your cameras into uh, a monitor, the colors are gonna look wrong because the, number, the monitor interprets the numbers differently than the camera meant to. Now exactly what kind of incorrect doesn't matter so much, uh, but you know, typically camera footage on a display will look washed out. Uh, some will say, oh, this is just the look of the camera, but that's not it. The colors are wrong. You've interpreted the numbers incorrectly. The camera knows what color it captured, but the monitor is interpreting the number in a way that's different from the camera. Now take that problem and multiply by the number of components that we have processing video data in our virtual production workflow. Each of those color spaces, sRGB, uh, sRGB linear, Blackmagic raw, ACES, ACES CG, it has its own dictionary of what numbers refer to what colors. So if we just pass the numbers from one component to the next without taking care to translate them in some way, then the colors that are going to come out the other end are going to be way off. Now you can try to color grade it at the very end, but that's not really what color grading was meant for. Uh, you're using an artistic tool to compensate for a technical breakdown. So how do we solve this problem? The easiest way to solve this problem is to run the colors through a dictionary, like a language dictionary, that can translate from one color space to the next. It translates from the device that we stored the data on that the device we're sending the data to. And when we translate with this dictionary, we're not really translating colors, like red is still red, a particular shade of green is still that particular shade of green. 
we're just translating the numbers underneath that we use to represent those colors. It's like translating a word from one language to the next. The thing that the word is referring to doesn't change. It's just the word that represents it. So you can see that even though the black magic and the red had different file formats in this example and different numbers in those files, when we translate them through the appropriate dictionary, uh, the numbers coming out on the other side that get fed into the display are the same. And that's because the displays, both of them in this example, are speaking the same language. So it makes sense that if we had the same images coming in, even though in between they were stored differently, they should still end up as the final, like the final image should still look the same on the other side. This leads to the main point, which is that OCIO is your color dictionary. It can translate between any one color space and any other color space. So once OCIO is set up in Unreal, Anytime you need to translate color spaces, you just tell OCIO the color space you're coming from and the color space you're going to. OCIO will take care of the rest. Now, OCIO is an external project. It's not bundled as part of Unreal. Unreal does know how to use it, but you have to separately fetch the OCIO configuration data and then point Unreal to it. Now, I'll say that uh, it's not clear where you want to get this data from. The documentation is definitely out of date in some places, and I would even say inconsistent. Uh, in general, I think you want the latest version of the configs, so I'm going to tell you how to install the ACES 1.2 version of OCIO. Uh, now, if you go to the Open Color website, it does link to some older versions of the config in a number of places, but it does eventually link to the, the latest configs I'm going to use, which you can also get from GitHub. So I've got the links here, both to the OCIO documentation and the GitHub repository that it links to with the latest configs. Now, if you just go to GitHub and you download the whole project, it's going to be multi-gigabyte. It's quite large. It's a lot of data uh, because it's got every conversion for every old version in there. You don't need most of it. So I've also linked to the release version of 1.2. Now, that only includes 1.2, but it's only about 125 megabytes, so it's significantly smaller. I'd highly recommend downloading that one instead. Save the project somewhere permanent uh, because you're going to link to it from Unreal. So here I am. I've got the uh, GitHub release pages up. It's from that last link. And this is the ACES 1.2 release. GitHub is a software development platform, meaning it's got a lot of intermediary steps. It's where developers work on stuff day to day. But there is the releases page that you can go to. So if I go back to the main project here, this is what the main project looks like. And then I go over to this section here and click Releases. It's going to show me all the latest releases. Now I can go back as far as I want, but generally you're only interested in the latest release. So sometimes you need to click into the actual like release number. But down here under Assets, this is the stuff that you're going to use. You just download this one, the zip file that says Ace, uh, Open Color IO Config Aces 1.2. So I'm going to click that, and it's going to download 124 megs versus the many gigabytes that it would have taken to download the whole project. I'm going to open that up. All right. So I'm just going to leave it here for now, because, uh, but I can move it to a more permanent spot later. I would recommend you put it somewhere permanent that you always know where to get it. Uh, and if I double click into this ACES 1.2 file, I see LUTs, config.ocio, readme.md. This config.ocio file is what you need to point Unreal to. So I always like starting with a blank project. So I've got my Unreal project browser here, and I'm going to create a empty film, television, and live events project. And I usually pick a blank project. And then it doesn't really matter what these settings are. I like to turn ray tracing on uh, if you have like an RTX graphics card. And I usually leave starter content on because sometimes there's stuff you want to reference. Like it's helpful to have uh, some mannequins and other basic meshes that you might sometimes use. And I'll call this OCIO uh, tutorial. All right. So I have my uh, blank project open, and what I wanted to do was bring in uh, that OCIO data by referencing it from Unreal. Now, once it's in, you can use it in a number of places, including the Composure tab or the Movie Render queue, and there might be a few more. 
Uh, but that's going to be another video. For now, I'm just going to show you how to bring it in and set up a basic config. So we're going to right click and then I think it's under miscellaneous and it's this nice colorful one here called Open Color IO Configuration. You can call this anything you want. I'm just going to call this ACES 1.2. Oh, it doesn't like the dot, so 1 underscore 2 because that's the version of the config that I'm going to import. Uh, double click it and you don't get much here. So uh, under configuration file, remember that config.ocio file that we downloaded before? This is what we need to point to. So I'm just going to open up this file chooser and uh, navigate. I believe it was under my downloads folder. Here it is. This aces underscore 1.2 and this config.ocio. So uh, after unzipping everything, it may be a little confusing where things are at, but this is the file I unzipped, the open color IO config, ACES 1.2. In there, there was another folder of the same name. And then finally, ACES underscore 1.2. And it, finally, I found this config.ocio. If you're having trouble finding this, I would go back to the GitHub section and try to re-download uh, re the release package. So just open that up. All right, that didn't do much. And in truth, nothing useful has actually happened yet. What we need to then do is go in and uh, tell, here, I'll show you. We need to go in and m tell Unreal which of these color spaces we're interested in because there's actually a lot. And uh, it's it sort of, this is an opportunity to just sort of whittle down the number of choices to just a set few. So what choices would make sense here? So let's talk about the different color spaces that you might want to use in this config. Uh, I've listed most of them here, but you could certainly have more than that. Uh, you probably won't have fewer than this though, because sRGB linear, for example, is the Unreal default color space. So if you're bringing something into Unreal, you need this color space. And if you're exporting something from Unreal, you also need this color space because it's either a destination or a source color space. Uh, the next two, Rec 709 and sRGB, are your standard display color spaces. So I have a computer display, which is sRGB, and I also have a video uh, display that comes out of the deck link, and that is Rec 709. So these are the most common for like showing HD footage. So I would be surprised if you didn't need these. Now Rec 709 and sRGB are very, very similar. There's like slight differences. And to be honest, if you accidentally showed one in the other color space, it would probably still look okay. But you know, we want to be as correct as we can, so I'm including both of them. Now, ACES and ACES CG are not going to be used in our live workflow. But remember, this is a uh, part of a more, uh, a larger workflow that is a hybrid live and post-production workflow. ACES, ACES CG are going to be used in the post-production step. So uh, early on, we're not going to touch them at all, but anytime we're interchanging with like another program like Nuke or Resolve, most likely we're going to be using ACES CG. It's similar to ACES, but it's a slightly smaller color space and sometimes it makes more sense for uh, CGI footage. So let's go add these color spaces. All right, so uh, the first color space we said we wanted to add was uh, sRGB linear. Now that's under the utility section. And you can actually see there's a lot of uh, linear things. There's linear Rec. 709 even. Now we're not going to use that. We just need linear sRGB. Perfect. Uh, the next one, let's add sRGB. Now I believe sRGB is listed under output, but you can actually use a lot of these outputs as inputs as well. Uh, the output input is more of a categorization than anything else. It's just to help this, this menu used to be like everything and it was it was super long and people complained so they've broken it up into these categories but it doesn't really matter you know which category it in, in, is in in most cases it can be a destination or a source color space uh, we also wanted to use rec 709 and then we were going to use aces now aces uh, 20651 is what people normally mean when they just say the word aces so that's the one we're going to add. And then one more, ACES CG. Uh, just to give a quick tour, uh, some of these other ones are used for, like DaVinci Resolve, you might recognize ACES CC, ACES CCT. 
Um, and if you have any of these camera brands, you might recognize uh, like Canon Log or like Sony S Log, S Log 3, Red Log film and stuff like that. Uh, for a lot of cases, the, uh, OCIO can actually directly interpret your camera's footage. So you might add more, that's totally fine, add as many as you like, uh, there's no harm, but okay, our config saved and closed, and it's ready to be used in all the other parts of Unreal. Now Unreal itself has some great documentation on getting started with OpenColor.io, so definitely also go check that out. And next, I highly suggest that you check out our article uh, written on vpifg.com about working with Composure and Unreal. Uh, so we will make use of OCIO transforms there quite extensively. Uh, we also will use OCIO when rendering that footage out with Movie Render Queue. Uh, so thanks everyone, I'm Jake G. Water with the Virtual Production Indie Film Guide.